Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks, and today I'm going to talk about a very new and exciting feature for me in Obsidian called Bookmarks. If you haven't already heard of these, stay tuned. If you're like me and you've already used the Starred Notes plugin, then you're going to be as excited as I was when I saw that not only does bookmarks supersede this, but it adds a whole bunch of new features to that functionality that I think are really handy and are just useful. The best ways to support the channel are, if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're gonna do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal or just fine. And if you just want to support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. So without further ado, let's actually dive into what we're going to talk about in detail today. So this is the outline of what I'm going to talk about. So what are the bookmarks and how does it relate to the star uh, note plugin? So I believe I already did remove the star plugin, but inside of, and this is also how you install these, Inside of the settings, if you go to core plugins, bookmarks will be here and you can toggle that on. But if you had starred notes, which is also still in here for compatibility reasons as of the filming of this video, if I turn that back on, it'll be there. But the starred notes were basically like picking your favorite notes and the, the notes that you want to just have in a favorites list. That was, that was it. Basically just a, a long list of favorites. So this already was sort of useful for me, especially because I like to pick um, like certain notes that I constantly return to, and now and I don't have to search for it. I can just be like, bam, okay, I know all my like high-level, frequently accessed things are there, especially like my um, Zettelkast and processing uh, DB folder pages and just other other things, my Readwise uh, queue to work through, etc. So this is uh, a very useful uh, plugin but the, the star plugin is actually going to be deprecated. So bookmarks. So bookmarks is basically starred plugin plus plus. It's better, it's one up. So let me actually remove the star plugin again because I don't need it anymore. So how to install it? You just saw that you go to settings, core plugins and bookmarks and you activate it. And with bookmarks, you get something you didn't get with starred notes and that is organizational folders so i have like these icons up here i can collapse everything or expand it but you have folders and you can make a new well, i say folders but as you can see it's a bookmark group but i think of it as a folder so make a bookmark group and new group and now you have a group but because of uh just how you can do this is that i can actually insert emojis because as you can see i love my emojis so you can actually name these groups and give them emojis. And this doesn't create an object in Obsidian at all. It's just purely for organization. And you can even have nested groups. So you can have groups within groups. No. I mean, we're all familiar, hopefully by now, that uh, constantly nesting uh, folders and content inside of folders. But that's like with just your general content. If this is strictly for like the most top of mind uh, salient and high level uh, items that you want grouped in a you know organizational area with a little bit of organization and nesting folders sprinkled on there probably okay which in my opinion it is um, so we got a new group now how do we use these groups how do we even make bookmarks so with bookmarks you can actually bookmark the current active tab with the button here or if we go to the actual note itself under more options uh, there is also bookmark and then if you run the command palette, there is commands for bookmark. Bookmark, show them, bookmark all currently open tabs, and bookmark the current search. More on that in a second. So once we add a file as a bookmark, I'm just gonna click the button here. It just finds the file exactly where it is. This one's in the root of my vault, so that's where it is. The title is just gonna be, um, let's just do bookmark. So here I'm inserting an emoji. And so you can totally do this. And that, now you can see the name of the file doesn't have an emoji in it. That's fine. I don't even need to rename the file because this is just the display title. So I can say bookmarks, bookmark group. 
I'm just gonna select new group. Uh, or you saw it defaulted just to just bookmarks, which is gonna be the root level. But I'm gonna pick a group, save, and now here's my new bookmark. If I close this note, I can click on bookmarks and there we go. Now it's the same as the starred notes plugin. I think this is really awesome because one, the organizational aspect, but two, you don't even need to rename the notes to add that little bit of flair of that emoji, which I really like to quickly scan for what I'm trying to look for. Now, searches. How can we star searches? Or how can we save the searches? This is really, really freaking cool. So let's say that I wanna search for um, any notes with ADHD within them, all ADHD content notes, but are, that are not from my journal, so my private journal. I want just my notes that have anything to do with ADHD. So this is a search I might run often. I don't wanna type this often, and there's no way to save this until now. Uh, so now, I mean, you could totally do this in like a query inside of a note, but if you want it as like a native search to show this in the pane instead of embedding that in a note, um, this is a way of now shortcutting that. So I mean, there were workarounds, but this is this is awesome. So what can we do here? So how do I save this particular search as you know a bookmark? Now it's not really. Uh, well, I guess you can do this here. I could just say run the command which would be the from the command palette, but we can say bookmark this search from here. So there's the query, and we could save it as uh, from button, because I clicked the button to get there. Okay, and then once we go there, it'll be from there. So let me actually clear this out, and we'll go and we'll click the from the button, and there's the search, along with all of that content. Nice. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll be in this note, I'm gonna say uh, bookmark, bookmark current search. And so you can see it pulled up the query and say um, command, because we did it from the command palette. Okay, and now if I clear it out again, just to verify, clicking command, now there is all of the content. So we can save searches now easily as a bookmark without having to embed it into a note. And another thing I really like is that the icons are different. So we can see that this is actually a search and not a note or a actual file in the file system. That's really handy. Now one other really awesome thing, and this is just is instead of having to use something like workspaces, which uh, I still sort of use, they're really handy for setting up and transitioning between like projects where you want a lot of specific notes open all the time for a specific project. Really handy, especially for like maybe D&D &D campaigns or other things. But Let's just say we have our vault. So I have my vault and I have, if I don't remove my dev log, which I'm migrating back into Obsidian now, uh, hidden, let me move this here for visibility. So if I don't remove my dev log, you can see I have a lot of these like green notes, which is my dev log stuff. And that is because I'm uh, migrating it back in and I have to relink everything. And it's a little bit of a lot of manual work. So. Let's just say I want to ignore that stuff for now in my global graph view. Now you can see I already have my groups. I have, um, stop. I have all my settings. I have all my, my group labels, the colors. I have all that stuff. So all those settings, I want to keep those settings. But let's say I want to only see, um, I want to see everything except the dev log. So that will regenerate the graph and it will do that for me. Do, 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 do. Then I wanna save this graph because I always wanna be able to quickly access everything other than the dev log. Now you can probably think of other ways of doing this like um, actually, so this was gonna be my original example, but let's actually do this, is I want to make sure I only see um, the tags for my maps of content. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, 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 uh. There we go. So I want to only see my maps of content in the graph view. And because the maps of content could relate to each other, let's remove uh, those. Interesting. Uh, no orphans. Okay. So that's fine. So the yellow files like this are uh, maps of content. Oh, I don't want to see tags. There we go. And orphans. Okay, yes. 
I'm not sure why it's doing that. Anyways, so when you see the, the maps of content like academia, which statistics links to academia. And so um, in short, like I could have this really high level view of like all of my maps of content in my vault as a graph. And now we can save graph views. So if I run the command for bookmark, bookmark um, current, or basically it's bookmark current tab. I don't want all tabs, I want bookmark. Untitled graph, ah, mocks only. I'm gonna save that under new group. And there we go, mocks only. So now if I remove this filter and I go back to all of my original settings, uh, I want tags, attachments, Okay, oh, I think it was probably existing files only that I needed to check earlier. That's fine. So now if I zoom out, we're back to our original graph. It's not filtered at all, which is exactly what we'd expect. Forgive the lag. So now if I close that graph, we're done with it. Once it stops lagging, I can actually go to mocks only. Once I select that, it's going to as you guessed, open up the graph with specifically those settings. We can see them already here. It populated exactly those settings, existing files only. That's what I wanted. Yep. And there we go. Now here are just my maps of content. So I wonder if I click that again. Yeah, it does remove that as we would expect existing files. I'm going to save that bookmark locks only true there. Bam. So we can even toggle back and forth between specific graph views if we wanted to. All of them saved. This is fantastic. I didn't know that I even needed this, but I needed this because now I don't have to use workspaces with the, the custom settings in the graph saved as its own individual workspace. I can just go and I can see a view of any of my different types of graphs already presented to me based on these save settings. Now, what might you use this for? If you have multiple vaults worth of content, like I'm actually migrating my developer log, blog, dev log, back into my main Obsidian, as well as all of my like uh, fitness and kinesiology type of notes. So two distinct um, areas that I had outside of my main vault, I'm actually migrating it all back in. They're gonna be in their own folders, but they're gonna be amidst all of the other information. I could easily do filtered graph views to just those vaults worth of content just by having the bookmark for it, easy, just easily able to see it. Again, workspaces can also work into this, but it's just another layer of awesomeness that has just been sprinkled all over this content. Nice. All right, so wrapping up, what are the last few things I wanted to say? Now, it's very easy to style this little bookmark icon. It's actually collapsed over here. So this little icon, you can color these icons just based on targeting the Lucide bookmark class. So this filling it in and actually doing the outline with the color is all you really need to do and it will target this this specific icon now i've also targeted several of the other um lucide icons which is why some of them are different colors it's this the same concept so that's really how you style the the button now what do i like about bookmarks overall uh, i've already said most of this but i like the safe searches because i only have to write out that search and that code code once and then I can save it. I never had need to rewrite it or remember it or do anything else. It's just saved as a bookmark. It's convenient. The uh, searches by topic are awesome because now I can easily jump into huge swaths of information or filter down based on search. The graphs, I, I didn't even know I needed that, but I needed that because now like my whole filtered mock view, if you want like a large bird eye view of just like the the main meta areas of your vault of all that content just filter down down on the mocks it's almost like a multi-tiered api structure i'm relating this back to tech again anyways it's exciting and then finally the folders or the bookmark groups it just makes it super easy to group a lot of these awesome bookmarks searches graphs notes whatever by like projects or specific groupings that have some sort of significance to you like for me i have like topics that i'm really trying to like gather information and really flesh out and i'm super interested in right now like authorship adhd and autism are like two are three of the very uh, salient things in my mind right now because i mean i got 
a stack of books on just like the subject of writing as a writer. So who knows what that might turn into. But yeah, there's topics. And then for me, I have like uh, meta stuff. I have notes where like uh, anytime somebody sends me a really nice heartfelt message that like really makes me feel some good feels, I save it and I put it into this. So it's like a note full of pick-me-ups. Life philosophy is an idea I got from, I think, one of my former bosses where anything that resonates with me is like a core belief of like my life and my philosophy on life. It, it just goes in that note. Productivity is just like stuff I would go to, like all currently open tasks in my vault or my goals for this year. And then my PKM workflow is just like how I actually process the information and the flows, like note to Obsidian to Seedling to whatever. The database tables for my research papers that I read or the, um, the actual note processing inputs, readwise, um, readwise stuff. This one's interesting is that uh, I've actually been, I lost 40 pounds in the last two months. So I did a lot of walking. I was walking like 10 miles a day. And so I was listening to a lot of podcasts. So I actually finally caught up on a lot of my podcasts. But now I have all of these notes from all of these podcasts. Thank you, Dr. Huberman. Love that podcast. And so I have all these notes that I now need to process, but I don't want to like forget which ones I need to process. So like I basically have a, a data view query to um, find out when the I last checked or la all the last date I processed um, readwise things. And so I can see anything after this date. So this will be the first one I process. Anything after that is still needing processing. So I can use this to like keep track of what I still need to actually process. Like I said, I have so much going on. I'm so stressed. <laughs> And my workbench for things I want to actually do um, or just catch all stuff. And then like you've seen my timeline before, I'm sure, of just like the content I've processed in my vault and I can't seem to switch the view to be a descending, but whatever. It's If somebody knows how to switch this into descending despite, despite me saying this, like, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, like I love the bookmark groups. I think it's a great feature. I'm really happy it's here now. Bye-bye star plugin. Great to have it. I want to know what your thoughts are. What do you think about the Bookmarks plugin? How are you using it? Have you found anything cool that you can do with it that I didn't cover today? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Leave comments uh, below, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.